I want to talk a little bit about that quintessential knight's weapon, the lance. We have quite a lot of pictorial reference for lance types. And the weird thing about lances is they vary hugely over time and from place to place. One of the particular interesting reference points for me is the Battle of San Romano, a painting by Uccello. It's an Italian painting, sometime around you know the 14. 30s to the 1460s. We don't know exactly when it was. My guess is it's slightly later. They have extraordinarily long war lances in that particular painting. Beautiful armour, beautiful horses, fantastic reference in it. The lances are about 12 foot long and I'm going to have a go at making a solid ash war lance. Now the problem with ash is, well this is 14 feet long, this is a 14 foot piece of ash and it may only be two inches by two inches. This is fully dry. One of the things you've got to remember is you've got to hold the lance in one hand and just that is incredibly heavy. There's no way you could, there's no way you could use a piece of wood like this on horseback. I can barely hold it with two hands and I'm not riding a horse and it has no weight on the end. These are two lances or spears that I use quite a lot. Uh, this is just a, an ash dowel, has no shape to it. The red end indicates the sharp end and the grey end indicates the blunt end so that I can try spinning things around and I know which direction it's pointing in. Obviously for this particular training weapon it doesn't make any difference but it's good because lances and spears have a sharp end and a blunt end. So that's something I use quite a lot. This is 10 foot, two and a half meters ish, uh, long piece of ash. It's fairly dense because the wood is uh, solid. Uh, it's about an inch and a quarter around and it works quite nicely as a short spear. That's quite useful, very, very handy. This, this is my tournament lance. It's about nine foot long. So it's quite a lot shorter than the lances of the Battle of San Romano. Uh, you could use a nine foot lance for war, but obviously a 12 foot lance arguably gives you more reach. Uh, this is perhaps interesting for you because there are some types of jousting we do for theatrical purposes or for display where you use a breakable tip tip made of uh, split wood, which breaks a bit more spectacularly. And so we have this ferrule on the end that the tips are inserted into. It's made of poplar, so it's fairly light. So compared to ash, this is actually a very light uh, weapon and I can hold it fairly easily in my hand. It has this cutout and this cutout's interesting because there are two ways of using it. You could have this under your arm and then hold the lance that way. We see that in some illustrations. You can also have your hand on that as if it was a hand grip and have the lance a bit longer. Uh, so lots of different ways of doing it. Typically, I think this is used for the hand grip, but if you want to, you can use it that way. And we know from a lot of fight books that lances can be used in some quite unorthodox ways. This is not very heavy for me. It's a little awkward, especially when it has a tip on the end, uh, but I can pretty much handle this easily on a horse. Because it's made of a light wood, I think this one's poplar, maybe pine, it is so much less dense and less heavy than an ash lance. The problem with ash is it's incredibly springy, it's used for making longbows, it's used for making spear shafts, it doesn't shatter very well and it's very dangerous. So if you want to kill somebody with a lance, you use a solid ash shaft. But solid ash this fat would be very very heavy so i've got to play around with the piece of ash that i've got and try and trim it down and make it work a much longer length but it'll probably have to be much thinner and i've got a couple of ideas about what i want to do what i've done is i've trimmed down the length of the ash and i've trimmed the edges off and i've sanded it down to something that's a bit more round let me show you This is the beginnings of my battle lance. It is still quite a thick piece of ash. It is dramatically more manageable than the solid piece. I think it's probably half the weight, literally taking those corners off, rounding it over. 
has meant that it's dramatically lighter. And I will be using it like this on horseback. It's still a bit too heavy, to be honest. And if I look down the main shaft of the lance, what I'm going to try to do is take the thickness down a lot more on this far tip, because ultimately, I want this lance to balance further towards where I'm holding it. If I hadn't shaped this piece of wood, obviously it should balance more or less in the middle, the middle of its length, which means there's quite a lot of energy downwards when I'm holding it at one end. What I'm gonna try and do is a bit more shaping to try and move the weight further back that way. I'm going to trim down the end there and keep it quite fat at the far end so that the point at which it balances is as far down towards my grip as possible. You need the point of balance in front of where you're holding it because you need to be able to control the lance up and down and you don't want it, un you don't want it perfectly balanced under your armpit. Uh, but this is substantially bigger than any other lance that I use. So it's going to be very interesting. Now what I'm doing is fairly simple I am just slowly going around it with a hand plane. Now, I am not in any way, shape or form an expert in woodworking. So if I'm doing this wrong, I apologize, but it is working. It's slowly reducing the diameter of my lance to the point where I want it to be. And for all of those people who are expert woodworkers who might be watching, um, I apologize if my technique isn't uh, perfect but learning is about doing, and I'm learning about shaping lances, and I'm learning about the balance of lances. I find it better than using machine tools or power tools, it's quieter, and it's kind of cathartic, and I've got to do this slowly. I don't want to thin it out too much, but I also have got to try to make it an organic shape. We know that medieval people, when they made arrows, for example, war arrows, when they made bolts for crossbows, they didn't just make them tubular. They weren't just perfectly symmetrical tubes. They had fat parts, they had thin parts. So the idea of shaping a uh, length of wood to move the center of balance one way or the other is actually completely normal for the medieval person. I've not really seen enough details about lance manufacture of the period, in fact, I don't think there is any, to know whether they did it with lances. Perhaps they did, perhaps they didn't. My guess is they would have done. There's always another possibility. I could put some weights the other end of the lance just to move the weight of balance further back. When you look down a piece of wood like this, a sword, a spear or anything, by putting your eye right next to the surface, you can see imperfections in the line, which you can't see when you look at it from a distance. So you can really see tiny differences in the uh, surface and where there's a little bit of a hump that I need to trim out. But let's have a go and uh, show you what I'm doing. I'm literally working my way around the piece of wood, trying to take off thin slices as I go, trying to keep it reasonably circular. I haven't clamped it because I find you need to actually rotate it with one hand while you're sanding it with the other. So if it's clamped, it just takes you 10 times as long. What I don't want to do is make this end too thin. So I'm just going to trim back from this bit and keep going until looking down, it's substantially thinner around this area. I'll just keep going over it little by little by little. This will create slight facets where the blade cuts into it but I'll sand those off if I can be bothered later. Whether they sanded it off or not, I don't know. I imagine for war, they just made them as practically as they could. Probably for tournaments, they made them all fancy and painted them and made them impressive. But for war, which this is, they probably just had them raw like this. What I'm constantly trying to do is move the point of balance. Yeah. Well, that's... Uh, Five minutes of hard work has moved the center of balance centimeter, half an inch. <laughs> 
which is good because I'm making progress. So I really want it to be back here. So I've probably got another few hours worth of work to do on this. Because I'm actually trying to find out how I want the shape to be, I, can, I can't be quite as confident as I would be if I actually knew what thickness it needed to be where. Uh, and I, obviously with wood, you can't put more wood on, uh, especially not with this kind of thing, uh, if you've taken off too much. So I'm going a bit cautiously uh, and we'll, we'll see how it comes out. It already feels a bit lighter in the hand, just moving the centre of balance back a couple of inches or a few centimetres, which is interesting. It doesn't take much to make it feel a bit better. There's a beautiful smell coming off the uh, dried ash, which must be very familiar to people in the medieval period. It might be interesting to consider whether because this is such an organic process, every piece of wood is different, everything that's shaped is different. I wonder whether knights had a favourite lance, which does beg the question, would they have been upset if it got broken in battle? Uh, maybe they didn't, maybe they just expected to use a lance that they had. But uh, I can imagine one lance feeling right when you use it in practice and then being quite disappointed when it broke in battle. I suppose if you survived the battle, maybe you wouldn't have been disappointed at all. Maybe you'd talk about losing your favourite lance once you survived, or maybe nobody cared. Who knows? But it does occur to me that every lance would be slightly different and therefore would have a slightly different feel. And part of the skill of being a mounted knight in a mounted charge would be to be able to adapt quite quickly to the weapon you were given. This is full-length war lance modelled after the Battle of San Romano, the length of the lance in those. It's about 12 foot long, solid ash, and it's really quite heavy. It's unfinished, but I thought I would test it out on Talos, part of his continuing education and part of my continuing education. It doesn't actually have a tip on the end yet. Uh, I'm having that made, so that may shift the balance completely. Uh, and it is relatively easy to control, although it has a lot of momentum because it's so long. Um, it's about four and a half kilos, so I can hold it outright, but not for very long. And uh, it seems to be quite manageable. There is a fantastic reference work from the Middle Ages, around the 1430s, 1440s, Dom Duarte, King of Portugal, wrote a treatise on knightly arts, jousting, fighting, that kind of thing. He actually mentions lances, and he actually mentions what kind of lance you should have, but it's rather vague. He says, take a lance that is as heavy as you can manage. Now, I take it from that, he means not something that's too heavy, and also not something that's too light. So this is Probably not quite as heavy as I could manage, but it is quite heavy compared to my uh, other lances. And because it's so long, it's quite awkward. This one, I think, is probably right on the edge of what I could manage repeatedly. I could handle a heavier lance, but for a much shorter period of time. But this feels about right. Uh, we'll see when we get a metal tip on the end. And I brought Talos out because Talos is still in training and he needs to learn about lance handling and uh, lance impacts as much as I do. You might notice that I've got the lance on my toe, which is actually quite a common way of handling it. it means the lance is a little bit lower and a bit easier to handle. A lot of medieval saddles, we see the lance actually resting on the saddle like this, just trapped by the thigh of the rider and the front part of the saddle. That's also another way of handling it, but that means it's a bit higher. So I think the tip of that lance is probably approaching 20 feet off the ground. So if you were going through the woods, you wouldn't want to carry it like that. But obviously in the open, it would be fairly reasonable. And this does, to me, resemble the length of lances that we see in the Battle of San Romano paintings. Incredibly long, look fairly cumbersome, but let's try it out and see whether they're practical or not. Good boy. This is my 
trusty target. Uh, used it indoors a lot. I brought it outside to get some fresh air. I'm going to try hitting that. It's a slightly unusual target for a horseman because it's actually slightly lower and in the painting itself we see lances mostly used against other uh, armoured knights. But this is the target I've got so I'll try it. The difficulty with a heavy lance and a lower target is that you have to drop below the horizontal to hit it which puts quite a lot more strain on your uh, arm and on your equipment. Now I'm not wearing armour and that may make a huge difference and I don't have a breastplate on so I'm going to have to couch this against my skin under my arm so we'll see how it goes. I will do some tests with this in harness with a lance rest and I think that might make it much easier. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how I do with it this way uh, and obviously I've got two places I can put the target. I can put it on my offside which is on this side which is the lance which will be a harder hit or I can go across the horse's neck like this and hit it on tournament side or joust a piece side. There are also lots of techniques where you can use the lance two-handed and on this side remember there are no real rules back then it's just a lance and you want to hit your target so if somebody says you can't use a lance two-handed they're completely wrong you can use a lance two-handed but of course then you can't control the horse as easily with the reins so there are lots of different techniques let's just have a go and see how this heavy war lance does against the target good boy come on Well, that hits with quite a ferocious impact, actually. I wasn't expecting that. The tip hasn't done any damage to it, but it felt dramatically more impactful than uh, my lighter lances. And I guess the amount of energy going into a target is based on the weight of the projectile itself. So a very light bullet has to go very fast, but a very heavy thing like a lance maybe doesn't have to go quite as fast. So I will, good boy, good boy, he wants to do more. I'll put the uh, target up and I'll do a couple more runs and, uh, and have a go. And then I think I've proven to myself that this is manageable, just, and then we've got to get a metal tip on it and try it in harness. But that will be for another video. Ha, I bashed his eye slot on that that time. I have to say the heavy war lance is a bit of a different technique. It requires a lot more preparation and quite a lot of strength to uh, get it in the right place at the right time. Good boy, come on, come on, walk on. Let's do another. <laughs> Well, it hits with a hell of a punch, but it's also taking quite a lot of energy out of my shoulder. You wouldn't want to be doing this dozens of times uh, in close succession because it takes quite a lot of energy, but it hits like a train. It feels like it hits much harder than a hammer. Quite a weapon actually. It really is quite an impressive weapon when you have one full weight and full length. Good boy, come on then, that'll do. That'll do for today, well done Talos. <laughs> <laughs>